What's happening, Wilmington? As always, Trey Owings here bringing you all the latest on UNCW athletics through and through. For tonight's episode, we'll be recapping baseball, tennis, softball, and all things teal. So sit back and enjoy the show because Seahawks Central Sports starts right now. So, there was a basketball game last night, in case anyone hadn't noticed, and good lord was it a good one. Congratulations to Rick Pitino and the Louisville Cardinals for their third NCAA basketball championship. The big dance in Atlanta had it all. Epic comebacks, clutch shots, and an emotional ending to an emotional journey. The Michigan Wolverines led by as many as 12 points in the first half, but thanks to some intense double press defense and inspiration in the form of national darling Kevin Ware, Louisville was able to give their injured star a national championship net, and May Patino, the first coach to ever win a national championship trophy with two different teams. Folks, I could go on and on about this game, but hey, you know the story as well as I do. So, it's time to head back to Wilmington, where we find that revenge is a dish best served cold. And with the weather we had last week, there was plenty of cold to go around. But so was some sweet payback as UNCW erased an opening season loss by defeating the College of Charleston 7-2 on Tuesday, April 2nd. The Seahawks lost the season opener 6-7, but even out of the annual home-and-home -home series and increased their record to 21-8. Hunter Ridge and Drew Farber was, were consistent as ever with two hits and two runs apiece as the Seahawks continued their winning ways. But tough competition lurked just around the corner in the form of the reigning number one team in the nation, Chapel Hill as they visited Brooks Field the very next day. One of the newest members to our Seahawks Central Sports team was at the game. So let's head on down to Brooks Field where Lindsey Nuzdio has the story to see if UNC Dub could get the dub. What's up, Wilmington? I'm Lindsey Nuzdio reporting to you from Brooks Field. Tonight, our Seahawks take on the nationally ranked number one North Carolina Tar Heels. The Tar Heels are currently winning the series 52 to 12, but we look forward to giving the Tar Heels the unlucky 13. Let's move over to the highlight reel to check out tonight's game. Hey gang, Trey here for tonight's highlights. Let's get into it. Well, from the get-go, it was pretty much all Carolina this time as we see third baseman Colin Moran crushing one deep to the right center field wall. UNCW outfield couldn't quite reach that one as Moran gets a double off the play. Next up was name of the year nominee Sky Bolt. And Bolt looking to show off some foot speed, but hey, he doesn't need to because that ball is out of here. That two run homer would be the freshman's only hit of the evening, but he definitely made it count. As we see later on in the third, the hits just kept coming. First baseman Cody Stubbs somehow manages to keep this ball in the field of play. But a racing Luke Dunlap can't make the diving catch as Stubbs pulls in a double in one of his three hits on the evening. After a demoralizing four-run inning, UNCW finally got some defense going thanks to Kelly Seacrest picking up the final out on a Charles Frank bunt down third. Speaking of great D by pitchers, check out this sweet field by Chris Munley as Louise Renville can't beat the throw to first. Kids got moves. But the drama continued in the seventh as Stubbs again grabbing another one. Stubbs then proceeds to body check Corey Dick off of first base to stay safe. Who says baseball isn't a contact sport? But speaking of contact, here's the man himself, Hunter Ridge, getting UNCW's second and final hit on the evening. Back to you, Lindsay. From the moment the first pitch was thrown, it was all Tar Heels tonight. Starting the game with a run-run first inning, the Tar Heels took a commanding lead in the third with five doubles and five runs, and it did not stop there. Out hitting the Seahawks 12-2, the North Carolina Tar Heels continue their domination in the series, 53 wins to 12. The Omahawks will be hosting the Davidson Wildcats this weekend at Brooks Field. This is Lindsay Nezio of Seahawks Central Sports, Teal TV. Whoo! That was ugly, but hey, they aren't the number one team in the nation for nothing. Moving on to softball, things are still looking bad for head coach Christy Norton and the gang. After splitting an away series with East Carolina on Wednesday the 3rd, the Lady Seahawks were crushed in a three-game sweep by the JMU Lady Dukes. 
The weekend showdown began with a demolishing 1-12 loss on Saturday the 6th, which was called in the 5th inning. The second game of the series, also on Saturday, wasn't much prettier. The Lady Dukes continued their dominance with an 11-2 victory later on that day. Between the two Saturday matchups, JMU combined for 23 runs and 26 hits. Now that's consistency, ladies and gentlemen, which also is why they are 26-9 and, and undefeated in the conference. Sunday's game was a bit more respectable, though, as UNCW dropped in the finale 1-6. But, come on, girls, let's turn it around. But, let's switch things up now and head from the diamond to the nets and check in with our women's tennis squad. On Saturday the 7th, UNCW won their fifth game out of the past six matchups as they defeated the North Carolina Central University Lady Eagles six games to one. Sophomore Alyssa Ritchie took her ninth straight singles victory as first-year head coach Evan Clark and the Lady Seahawks are now 11-6 overall. Ritchie also brought in another point in the number two doubles match along with teammate Angie Seckley. The number three doubles team consisting of junior Kelly Cameron and sophomore Miller Hales also picked up a point and pushed their record to 11-4. UNCW wraps up their home and regular season schedule on Saturday, April 13th against Charleston Southern. So hope to see y'all there. And back to baseball. Fresh off the beat down of the century, UNCW is looking to reclaim a little bit of swagger as they traveled to Davidson College on April 5th and proceeded to host the Wildcats two more times over the course of the weekend. Caitlin Dula has a story. What's happening, Seahawk Nation? I'm here at Brooksville to bring you all the action for the UNCW baseball team. Tonight, the Seahawks play host to the Davidson Wildcats in a two-game weekend series. Last night, UNCW suffered a tough loss at Davidson, plating only one run and a 2-1 loss. Matt Bates pitched a complete game and tied his career high for 11 strikeouts. Tonight, the Seahawks look to get some revenge and grab their first win in three games. Let's roll the highlights and see how the Diamond Hawks fared. Well, sophomore Jordan Ramsey was on target with his pitching all day. Here we see him striking out four different Davison batters. Ramsey would go on to record seven strikeouts on seven innings pitched. The Seahawks had some outstanding offense Saturday night. Here we see Drew Farber hitting a three-run blast over the right field wall in the fifth inning. Not only was UNCW's hitting a factor, but so was Davis's pitching and fielding errors. Here we see Derwin Olinger walking Luke Dunlap for an unearned run. The Wildcats had six errors on the day. That match with the Seahawks speed helped drive in some runs. Here's Molinero smacking a routine single to the second baseman, but he couldn't feel the three hopper. The Wildcats began to fall apart in the seventh, dropping a pop-up by Luke Dunlap. Dunlap slams his bat down, expecting to be out, but the Wildcats' struggle continued as it seems no one knew where the ball was during this play. Davison's frustration continued as Dylan Bass hits a ball to the shortstop, but he pulls the first baseman off the bag, advancing all runners. For the final out, we see Dylan Bass thrown over to first baseman Corey Dick to round out the evening. After suffering their second straight loss last night, UNCW came out to play today, and play they did. The Seahawks heated things up in the third inning, scoring five runs. Some of those runs coming off of Matt Keeler's home run. Later in the day, Drew Farber hit a home run of his own. The Seahawks won in dominating fashion, smashing the Wildcats 15-2. Thanks, Caitlin. Sunday's matchup also ended in victory for the Seahawks, but played out in a different fashion. Wilmington scored all four of its runs in the third inning thanks to some clutch singles from Luke Dunlap, Ryan LaGrange, and Matt Keeler. The defense held up well as junior lefty Christian McDonald stayed undefeated while not giving up a single run until he was relieved in the eighth. Although UNCW didn't get the full sweep, the two victories did help the dub improve to 23-10 on the year and 19-6 at Brooks Field. So, with all that said and done, let's turn the corner at third and head on over to the highlight reel for the final stretch of tonight's episode. Perry DeLuke is at the desk for this week's segment of the Seahawk Top 7, so take it away, Perry. What's up, Wilmington? Perry DeLuke here with another segment of the Seahawk 7, bringing you all the action from the field from this week's past events in the UNCW sporting world. Now let's take a closer look at some of that action. 
Starting things off, play number seven, Luke Dunlop. One of his three hits. This is the game against Davidson College. And Luke starting things off for the Seahawks. Play number six, UNCW versus NC State. Ground ball fielded, and Corey Dick coming off the bag there with a tag. Nice play, Corey. Play number five, Seahawks versus North Carolina Tar Heels. Drew Farber with the throw down, the tag out. Right there, the Tar Heel knocked down. He was out for about 10 minutes, but he's all right. Play number four, big play here for UNCW coming up. This is against Davidson. Uh, great hustle on both sides of the defense and uh, all, as well as offense. Something you know, that's few and far between nowadays in, in baseball. Play number three, he caught him swinging. It's a strikeout for UNCW. And play number two, deep to right field. Matt Keeler with a three-run shot here. UNCW uh, having some <laughs> exciting fans in the, in the crowd. This was a big play for UNCW. Uh, they would go on to win that game 15-2 over Davidson. And play number one, Hunter Ridge up to bat. This is the game against NC State. It was a cold, chilly night, but this ball had a lot of heat in it. And Hunter Ridge with another home run, a three-run shot for the Seahawks before losing to NC State. And NC State would go on to win that game 10-6, but it was a very good game. The Seahawks played hard and unfortunately were able to capitalize. Well, folks, that'll do it for this edition of the Seahawks 7, bringing you the top plays in the UCW sporting world. Until next time, I'm Perry DeLuke for Seahawks Central Sports, Teal TV. Back to you in the studio, Trey. Excellent work, Perry. Well, Wilmington, that's all the time we have for tonight's show. I know, I know, I'll miss you too. But don't fret, Dublin, because next week's episode, which happens to be our season finale, is just around the corner. So until then, y'all, whether it's on the field, by the courts, or at the track, I'm Trey Owings, and I will see you at the game. Good night, guys and girls, and go Seahawks.